right now. <laughs> I just did not want to talk about food, and I get in here, and who do I find out? Our first guest of the year is Mike, Mike Benninger <laughs> of Time Management, and we're going to talk about food. But it's that good we are. food, though, right? We're talking it's, about good food. It's very good food, mm -hmm. but this is the time of year where we all have hangovers. We have yes. the economic hangover because our wallets are strained from all the Christmas shopping. Mm -hmm. We have the physical hangover from all the wine and other fun things like New Year's Eve, and then there's the, in my case, the belt hangover. And I think that's one of the things I want to address today is we want to start the year off with healthy food choices and healthy ideas about food. And this isn't like a nutrition segment in the sense of being a nutritionist, just smart, simple things to help people make very, very small choices that have a long-term and a positive, healthy impact. Can you do two things? If you're, uh, if you're feeling the pinch financially right now, can you, can, you, can you find those ingredients at a reasonable price to make uh, healthy foods? <laughs> it just seems like a lot of times people talk about you got to go to certain stores to buy certain products, and they tend to be a little more expensive. Well, it depends on where you actually shop. And Unfortunately, North Americans have a very skewed nature of like thoughts on how much things actually cost. If you look at our grocery prices versus our incomes in North America, we rank very much near the end of the top 30 as far as prices. We're very, very low. Uh, our prices here are very competitive compared to our incomes. And the selection we have in North America is astonishing. Mm -hmm. in the, as, as a kid growing up, bok choy or something along those lines was almost unheard of. That's as right. A, now there's four different kinds of my local Fortinos. And you don't have to spend a lot of money, to be honest, you really don't. If you want to buy organic ingredients from organic markets, obviously there is a premium to be paid for that choice, that lifestyle. Is there benefit in it? That's a personal choice people make. I have clients when I do my personal chef stuff that demand organic, and they get organic treatment. But they also make that economic decision to do that. All right, let's talk yeah. about personal chefing because that's kind of a, an interesting thing and that's what you do. You go into people's homes and you prepare food for them. Now, as a chef, it, it, don't you feel like you can get more uh, flavor out of food if you use the creams and the butters <laughs> and all the stuff that isn't good for the uh, old belt hangover? It is a trade-off. The reality is some things actually taste better, you know, and, and our bodies are built and designed uh, to live a very different life than we live in North America now. Up to, what, 200 years ago? We didn't have refrigeration, you know? So our bodies did not store food the same way that we actually uh, consume it because we had to hunt and gather every single day. Now we can keep food for days, weeks, months. But our bodies haven't evolved much in the last 200 years compared to the previous 20,000 years. So we store fat when we uh, have excess because we're expecting to have lean times later. That's how our bodies work. <laughs> well, there's no lean times in North America anymore. It's always available all the time at a reasonable price. So. You know, our bodies are not the way uh, that our actual systems need to be to move, match our society. Things are different now. So you have to cook differently. Uh, I love using butter and cream and fat. Is that a hard transition for you when, when you're trying to, say, cook? Someone re is requesting a very light meal. Is it, is it do, you, do you want to use the, the fats? Is it hard <laughs> as a chef? just slip it in there because and they don't even do, know. That's right? They like to use the rich, you know, the yeah. rich foods. Right? Well, so. the reason that restaurant food tastes different than home food primarily is two things, butter and salt. Restaurant foods use five times as much salt as, as they do at home. So I because, shouldn't be going to a restaurant every night then? No, no, night. no, it's a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's about moderation. And, right. you know, I like to use the Julia Child rule. Julia Child was 91 when she died. And she'd been a survivor of breast cancer, and she ate butter, she drank wine. I think she smoked in her younger days. But she put cream on everything. And her rule was very simple. Have everything, but just have a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the rule that she lived by. That's how by. the French live, right? That's so, how the French live. Yeah. They try a little bit of everything, and they're, and they're frighteningly skinny, and they smoke like trains, they drink like fish, but they live to be the same age as North Americans with a far, far more unhealthy lifestyle. They don't have platters diet. of proportion, they don't the have size of, of plates of servings, exactly. right, when they're And that's the something restaurant. we're going to talk about a bit later is portion size. That's something in North America that tends to be skewed more and more all the time. Now, in your business, you go into people's homes and you prepare their food, and so I would assume that m most times the people that you're going to work for are people that don't know how to cook. Those are people that would be tempted to uh, buy a lot of fast food and, yeah. and, and eat out a lot. So by going to a business like yours, Personal Chef, they, they have a chance to get some good quality food yeah. that, uh, that's healthier for them, right? Well, actually what I find is the majority of my clients aren't cooking challenged or time challenged. Okay. Hence, you know, time, time management. management. Right. Uh, a lot of them are simply just too crowded from time. They, they work all day. There's, this is very much a commuter's area, living in Hamilton, Burlington, Oakville. People commute to Toronto, Mississauga every single day. You had an hour to your day each way, and all of a sudden, an eight or nine hour day plus two hours of commuting, you leave at six in the morning, you're home at 6.30 at night, then you gotta start thinking about groceries and, and shopping and cooking. 
I simply save time. I, so I save so you time. do the shopping, yep. you do the cooking. Now, now you come in and like, would you cook like a week's worth of meals, or, or, or yep. would you, do you? Okay. Or a week, or possibly two. It depends how often you consume. You want to consume services like mine. If uh, my normal package starts at 20 meals plus side dishes, and that will last somebody as little as four or five oh, days. People can do what they want. Mm -hmm. If they or yeah. they could last just for weekends. I have, I have one client that actually only <laughs> uses my stuff on the weekends. Huh. Because during the week she has time, but the weekends they want to sleep, they want to play with the kids, they That's want to they want to have their own lives. Monday yeah. to Friday though, she wants to save those two hours. Uh, dinner parties are the same thing. Uh, you guys were working New Year's Eve, as mm -hmm. was I. I was mm -hmm. actually doing a dinner party in Oakville for ten lovely home, lovely people. But they wanted to save themselves the effort of the restaurant experience. They didn't want to leave their house. They didn't want to have to worry about driving or babysitting. And when you're having That's a party, a nice you want to be able to enjoy your time with your guests. Exactly. And if you're running in and out of the kitchen worrying exactly. about how the food's going, you don't get to enjoy yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have the freedom to tell me, Mike, slow down. We want to have dessert a bit later. They wanted to have the freedom to move at a different pace. And that was the nature of being a personal chef. I got to adapt my menu. If they were at a restaurant, you go as fast as the food comes out. Yeah. Well, right. there you go. So, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a quick break. We're back with you, Mike, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to learn a couple of your secret recipes. All right. <laughs> Don't go away. Our pal Mike Benninger, and we're talking about uh, kind of just being a little more conscious of your diet in the new mm -hmm. year. Everybody likes to do that this time of year, but we should do it all year, shouldn't we? We always should, mm -hmm. but we don't. No. And, and that brings up a point I want to, to make early in the, in the conversation here. Sure. People make crash decisions about crash diets. People make crash decisions about getting healthy all of a sudden. I'm going to join the gym. Yeah, this well, is the New Year's resolution. The New Year's, I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to lose 15 pounds. I'm going to do whatever. <laughs> People make those conversations. And I, I did it when I quit smoking. I tried for years and years to quit smoking, and then I finally did. But you do things gradually. You start gradually. You should actually take things off gradually. You never started smoking a pack a day. You yeah. can't finish by having none every day. You never started by gaining 15 pounds in the first day. You gained it over a period of time. That's the only way to stick to it, right? Exactly. You have to do it so yeah. you have to do it gradually in bite-sized pieces, literally in this case. Mm -hmm. I brought a little example in here, and I want to show some, if you guys can zoom in on this. These are, are French truffles, mm. the chocolate truffles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Those three truffles are about 100 calories. Okay, and, just, and just to put it three. in perspective, what, what, what's the average amount of calories Per day that someone should consume. Well, most healthy. most diets are based on either 2,000 or 3,000, depending okay. on what scale you're in. But in that, in that case, there, those three little itty bitty truffles, which you could easily eat in what minute and a half, two minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's 100 calories a day. Yeah. Upper, Just think of how many hundreds you'd have to take to fill up. <laughs> <laughs> well, 100 calories a day, either way, yeah. either up or down, is 10.5 pounds a year. Ooh which is 3,500 calories per pound. So, so you're not recommending the truffle diet. <laughs> no, I'm not recommending the truffle diet. But that's one example of like, and that's a fairly extreme thing. But even on a more gradual level, men on balance gain one pound a year from the time they're 25 till they're 40. On balance, that's how we gain. Women gain at a slightly different rate depending on their metabolism. The difference between switching from sweet and low, which has effectively one calorie mm -hmm. per package, to a level teaspoon of sugar. A level teaspoon of sugar has 15 to 16 calories. Just the transition, one cup a day, taking, say you have two cups of coffee, for one of them substitute a sweet and low as opposed to sugar. Mm -hmm. That's worth three and a half pounds a year. Just that one little itty bitty yeah, thing. That's the thing, I don't think people realize. And I, people I know don't realize when it. we were talking before when, uh, when Bob filled in for you, Matt, Bob was drinking a whole lot of pop, Bob from the yep. morning show. And he, drink, he was drinking, not only was he putting in a couple teaspoons of sugar in every coffee he drinks, which he still does, but also <laughs> drinking a ton of Coke throughout the day. Yeah. And but you know what, you gotta take the, the water helps. cooler and make it a water cooler again instead of Yeah, water. no <laughs> kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, as a kid, I remember growing up in a case of Coke when I was a kid 20 years ago, was $5.99. Mm -hmm. Today, a case of Coke is five ninety nine. Twenty 20 yeah. years later. I yeah, know, that's true. And, and, and there's, you know, people are drinking a lot more of it. 160 calories a can for a can of Coke. You know the other yeah, thing about that? Oh I God. don't know how he would sleep at night because, I, I don't mean, know. all day you just... Well, I mean, just Bob is a little high for well, yeah. <laughs> now we know why. Well, yeah. yeah. So he said, but just I've noticed even friends, too, that have cut back on their pop alone, as yep. you're saying, just cutting back on a couple cans a day or whatever, just cutting that out of your diet, people lose weight. It's an astonishing difference. Yeah. Take, take the stairs. Mm -hmm. and, and again, this is a small, small thing. Take one flight of stairs. Uh, there's a rule that you should always go up one flight on foot and down two, depending mm -hmm. on, on what load you're carrying, obviously. That one difference is 25 calories yeah. to walk up a flight of stairs. You don't think about that. How many times a day do you actually walk up a flight of stairs? Back and forth. If you're doing remotes in here, you're going to the roof, you're going downstairs to garage stand, you're back and forth, you're back and forth. Over the course of a day, a week, a month, that's all of a sudden a lot of big I changes. do the stairs here just because I, I do think about that, and our elevator is really slow it's anyway. It's painfully so yeah. <laughs>
All right, now, better. The other thing too, of course, is that is that food is is all about energy, and it and, is. and the, the the foods that we eat uh, will really determine the way that we feel. And we're talking about glycemic index when we're talking about uh, energy foods and what they do to us, right? right. Okay. What, you, what glycemic index actually is, it's a measure, and it's an empirical measure on how food actually is converted to sugars and consumed by your body. There's a little more scientific explanation for that, I won't try to bore everybody with that. But basically foods are grouped into three general categories, low, medium, and high. You want to have a diet that's obviously balanced, preferably in the area of low and medium glycemic index values. What you end up with in the low values are ones that your body consumes very slowly. This is how you avoid the sugar spike, the buzz. Okay, there's what, some of the examples. Right? So you've got skim milk, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, and plain yogurt. These are ones that your body can metabolize mm -hmm. on a regular mm -hmm. basis. You don't get high sugar spikes. Yeah. And sustainable it's actually, energy, right? Sustainable, long-term, healthy energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next section is the medium value. Now this obviously has slightly more sugar value to it as well. Sure. And it has more fruits in it because of all the fruit sugars. Pineapple, bananas, rye bread, and raisins. Again, I'm, still some healthy elements to oh, yeah. these, but again, it's moderation. Right? It's yeah. all about right. moderation and balance. And, mm -hmm. and, and the key thing is to actually maintain the balance. And I admit, I'm as bad as everybody else's. I enjoy red wine and big steaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now I, <laughs> but yeah. not, not every single day. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, and they kind of factor into the high uh, end of things? Not or? so good, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're actually okay. The problem that you run into is in the high high value here, we'll take a move over to the high section, things like jelly beans, mm -hmm. which are obviously you know high in fat, french fries, again mm -hmm. that's self-explanatory, ice cream, I love ice cream, I'm a sucker for ice cream, mm -hmm. but ice cream really isn't that good for you, but again have a little, a little bit, yeah. what about little frozen bit. yogurt? Mine's Again, okay. very high in sugar. Oh, very high in sugar. You know what? It's the sugar. I think that uh, we talked about this before, where where you know a lot of people, I guess, had this misconception that sugar was okay because it wasn't fat. But mm -hmm. people didn't realize that sugar turns into fat, right? Well, it does. So yeah, that, you know, well, it, it does get you in any way. Well, <laughs> one of the things that I that. recommend people do is read labels. And what's shocking is that when people find out something's fat-free. It's got more calories than the regular version does. Are the labels as clear? I, I mean, don't don't you find that uh, manufacturers today are putting a lot of confusing messages out there? Low fat, no fat. What, you know, what is it, and, and what does that exactly mean? And a lot of times, I, I think the packaging can be a little deceiving, right? Um, actually, I wouldn't call it deceiving because there's very strict food labeling laws in Canada. What, you got to read the fine print. You got to right? read the fine print. But what you also have to know is be an educated consumer. Too many people just go in and see low fat and make assumptions mm -hmm. about the fact that it's fat free or that it's actually healthier. Depending on how they do it, they may be replacing fat from uh, trans fats with sugars. So you may not actually be getting that much healthier a process. I recommend everyone read their labels very, very carefully. And you can trust the labels that you read in Canada for the most part. If you buy stuff from ethnic markets that are, uh, have labels in different languages, that's a different conversation. Sure. But everything that's actually certified to be sold in Canada actually should have an English label and a nutrition chart on it. So looking at, uh, looking at the sugar levels, looking at the salt levels, and really making sure you're paying attention. Just like that. Eat yogurt. We did, we did a nutrition <laughs> chart right there. Good for All right, we're going to head into the kitchen and uh, yeah. cook something healthy, right? I hope so. So um, ice cream, <laughs> steak, uh, no. not a part of the plan. Yeah. Uh, darn. All right. It's a new year, Matt. Yeah, that's right. It's a new Resolution. year. We're turning over right, a new, new leaf. Right. We'll be right back. at home. Matt and I are here with Mike Benninger and Matt's looking around and he's like, the you know what, I don't like any of this stuff. This is all too healthy, Mike. It no is, butter, it's healthy no food. Cream. Mike, you have made some really good choices here, I can see. Yeah, exactly. all right, what do we got in this well, uh, delicious? And Matt uh, hates it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is the once a week stuff. Okay. You can have this every now and then. Yeah. Your potatoes you can have on a regular basis too. Okay. Just have a little. Okay. Before we start this, I want to talk about one other thing related to food. Mm -hmm. Portion size. Right. Yes. Now. On the front here, I've got two plates, a right. black one and a white one. Right. Okay. The black plate. That's I, for Leslie. Okay. <laughs> the, the black plate there is what I have in my house. Okay. okay. Now, if you hold that next to the white plate that I bought from my restaurant supply house, the restaurant supply house plate is much bigger. Look at that. And studies have shown that when people go to buffets yeah. or Put get portions, they will get the same amount on a plate, regardless of the plate size. Yeah. So yeah. if they want a third of their plate to be mashed potatoes, they will put it on. If their plate is the black plate or the white plate, have you? Uh, have Look you done how much you could put. How much food you could put that's on that? That's exactly. You could go problem. right to the end. Have you done any? You have you done any cruising? Because just on one. a cruise ship, the plate is <laughs> twice the size. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's a platter. It's like this you one right here. Walk out with both ends. <laughs> there we this. go. Yeah, that's it. This is it. the average. Uh, yeah. There we go. It's a cruise ship plate <laughs> size. 
and and it's true. And 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 I go every time whenever I'm on cruise, I'm gonna be really good. And then I get there. And you and fill it with potatoes. Try a little of this, a little of that. Yeah. And the next thing, not the potatoes. Yeah. Well, I actually, I was on a cruise for my honeymoon, and I actually lost weight. Really? You took the stairs. No, 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 no. <laughs> the um, cruise line that we were on. We you were got on. sick. <laughs> no, actually, the, we had one day the weather was pretty was pretty frightening, but I actually lost weight on the cruise. Wow. The food, I found the food that disappointing in the cruise. I actually lost oh, weight. You know what? As a chef, you would. No. And, and yeah. No, it, it, it do you go into a restaurant and you have a really critical eye nope. and you're like a... On the contrary. Nope. Taste? I, I, I ignore that entirely. What I want when I go to a restaurant is I want the simple things done right. Yep. On well, the cruise that's ship... that's what I mean though. You want quality, don't no, we? I, I'm actually okay with people doing different things, but I want simple things done. Like for example, on the cruise, what drove me crazy, I like ice cream. It's, yep. my, it's my weakness. Yep. I admit that. I have a problem with ice cream. I'm okay with that. But I wanted my ice cream served to me in a dish that's not in the, out of the dishwasher 30 seconds ago. Oh, so, so by the time, I get, and, yeah, time I get my bowl, I've got ice cream soup. Yeah. This, this was every meal for seven uh, days. Uh -oh. yeah. I don't think I'm asking a lot to have cold ice cream in a cold bowl. You're right. I got Caesar salad served to me on a plate that had been out of the dishwasher 15 seconds. Oh. And it was, my, it all wilted and had been destroyed within... They actually washed it with the salad yeah. on it. <laughs> It was actually your neighbor's salad, and they just. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, like, it was well done. I'm not that critical when it comes to what I actually eat, because Burlington mm -hmm. has spectacular restaurants. Yes, and, they do. And yeah. I do things differently in my own home than I do when you go out, and I'm, I'm okay with that. But do simple things. Yeah. Give me clean glasses. Give me yeah. clean cutlery. Yeah. Don't serve me hot food on cold plates and cold food on hot plates. Yeah. Simple, basic things. If it's not, if it's too salty for me or not salty enough, I ignore that. Yeah. I go for the experience. Wow. All right. So. All right. You've got some uh, some salmon cooking yep. over there. Now that's something I like. I, right? I, can never mm -hmm. get enough salmon. Okay. And salmon's good for you. Salmon is not only good for you, it's very high in omega-3 fatty acids, which are exceptionally healthy for your brain, for your joints. Salmon's one of these great things. In North America, it's very reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. It's very healthy as far as being the amount that you actually have. And it's available everywhere all the time at consistent quality. And that's something that's fairly unique throughout the world, is that we have consistent quality that's safe all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I actually picked that for a topping. What we're going to do here first, though, is I'm actually going to make a very basic spinach salad. And the reason I chose a spinach salad was because there's certain parts of spinach that we're going to add to it that have very strong health benefits. Uh, Leslie, if you wouldn't mind, I want you to start making a vinaigrette first. Okay. Vinaigrettes, <laughs> a vinaigrette as opposed to a cream-based dressing has two advantages. Number one, the vinaigrette lets the food flavors come through as opposed to a heavy cream-based dressing, sure. which buries it. But number two is that the acidity helps you have a lower glycemic index. You right. digest it more slowly. So okay. in, the, in, the, in the upper corner there, I've got some sliced clementines. Mm -hmm. Can you squeeze some of those into that jar? Sure. How many? Oh. Dead, just the ones that are cut. Okay. Okay, see, one thing that I have a problem with is is mixing sweet and salty or tangy things together. And I know as a chef you do that all the time, right. and the results are really good. <laughs> but I have a problem with that. I mean, I'm seeing uh, blueberries and, and, and these things going into my salad, and I, I don't know, I like to see That's tomatoes awesome. and... Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go. croutons. Tomatoes, and tomatoes are good for you. <laughs> croutons are not. <laughs> Unless you, make, unless you make your own croutons. Not like a salad of potatoes with croutons? No. <laughs> and a, Aren't they a vegetable? Okay, now what? A couple of good gloves of, of olive oil. Olive oil, okay. Now, I use olive oil because olive oil is a healthy oil. Mm -hmm. It's a Mediterranean oil. A little more than that. Okay. Well, and we were talking uh, actually earlier about the Mediterranean diet, right. right? I mean, and, and Mediterranean <clears throat> olive oil, a big That's right. part of that. Exactly. It's a healthier way to go. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay. And now, no. how much this is a little autom bit? Automated, just, right? Just one second. That's lots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot, a, lot, a lot comes out of that. And that's my spectacular wedding present, Peppermill. Love that thing. That's a good one. Yeah. It's a beauty. That's they, very nice. Made, made by Peugeot. Don't they make cars? Oh, they wow. do make cars. Oh. They make cars yeah. and pepper and grinders. Pepper. And here's the best part. It's adjustable. <laughs> yeah, I you noticed can, that. It has you, fine You can grind. actually make it super coarse. That's fantastic. So you, get, you get this lovely, or else you can get really, really fine. I think it's wow. the cool. I just think it's the coolest thing. But yeah. Oh, it is very that, cool. That's just me. So, okay, okay we're running out of time. Okay. Mix, mix it with it. Okay. Now. Spinach salad, why spinach? High vitamin A, mm -hmm. vitamin K, B1, B2, high in manganese, magnesium, selenium, potassium, oh my you gosh, name it's it. the entire alphabet. <laughs> it is good for it. One cup, 40 calories. There we go. Oh, really? 40 calories. Wow. Okay. So, put about half that in there. All right. Now. Now, why only half? Is she gonna drink the no, other half? Because or? moderation. Oh, okay. Oh. Moderation, that's lots. Okay. So, next, walnuts. Walnuts. About a quarter of those go in there. Why okay. walnuts? Walnuts are also very healthy. Omega-3 oh, fatty they're so acids. good for yeah. you. Anti-inflammatory benefits. They're, yeah. they're thought to ease uh, arthritis mm -hmm. over time, inflammation of your joints, and apparently, studies are still kind of inc inconclusive, they might actually help with cardiovascular. Wow. I heard they're the best nut out there. They're Walnuts very, very and good. then almonds fall closely They're behind, very, right? very good. Yep. Blueberries. This okay. is the new thing. 
The whole world has been eating blueberries for 20,000 years. Mm -hmm. Only now they started to figure out that blueberries, a half cup of blueberries, which is probably twice that, mm -hmm. has 40 calories. Mm -hmm. But it's also got incredibly so large amounts you. of antioxidants, mm -hmm. and which help get rid of free radicals in the human body. Right. Spectacular good for you. Is that cheese? That's a bit of cheese. So good. But, all over the cheese but this, is, but this is also low-fat cheese. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that low-fat cheese that I chose for this one here is the, the salad is rich enough. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those times we, we make a choice of having a low-fat cheese on a regular basis. Sure. If you want to have a big brick of uh, triple cream Brie, mm -hmm. once a month or twice a month. Well, that would taste really good in this oh, salad. Probably <laughs> would. But that you can do. For right now, though, just have a little bit of this. Okay. With low fat, it adds flavor. It adds mm -hmm. a ton of calcium, especially for women True. who need calcium. It's a little right. bit's fine, yeah. right? And also, it'll, it's also better for your colon. Okay. And it's, it's very, very good for you. The last, for a little extra flavor, some fresh mint. Ooh, wow, that's okay. a lot of Because it adds flavor. Okay. So someone can mix that up. Okay, right. I'll, I'll mix, Matt, and mix. we have to go to a commercial break, okay. and then I guess we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with uh, eating, right? right? That's Pop what we're here up. for. Uh -oh. oh, Matt's Make feeling. Make it a little to win, but nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. So now where does the uh, salmon fit into all of this? Well, the salmon is a choice that you can have if you want to add some protein. Mm -hmm. And make it a meal, right? Make and make, and make it natural. Would you meal. put it on top or like on the side? Uh, it depends what you like. Yeah. Some people like to have it at the top. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of like it at the side myself. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then you can either have some on its own or with yeah. a bite. Plus, okay. this is this is still warm. So you don't really want to have warm with cold. Right. And cold with warm. Oh, right. See, okay. back to the whole yeah. 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 thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. get Mike mad. Oh. There you go. <laughs> so it depends what you want to do. But that right there, that's about a three ounce portion of salmon mm -hmm. okay. and probably a six or seven ounce portion of salad. Mm -hmm. That would easily be a lunch. That would keep. Oh, that's a fantastic meal. That's yeah. super healthy. Wonderful. Top it up with a couple <clears throat> extra walnuts just because they're good for you. Hey, you know what? You can reach Mike Benninger, personal chef, time management in Burlington. And uh, hey, that'd be a good way to get yourself in good shape for the yeah, coming year. Yeah, set you up for the, for the weekend. Yeah.